inlets offer a way for boaters to get out into open water. Some inlets may be calm and easy to navigate, but others are extreme, and only the best boaters can tame them. So join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the most dangerous inlets and marinas. Number 15, Haulover Inlet. All right, let's start things off with one of the most dangerous inlets in the world. There are well over 60 inlets in the state of Florida, but the haulover is the nastiest, and most boat captains will tell you to avoid it completely. But if for some reason you have no other choice or you just want a ridiculous challenge, then hold on to your hats, because the haulover inlet requires a great deal of experience and knowledge to get through it. This inlet is man-made and connects Biscayne Bay to the Atlantic Ocean, but the jetties make for some strong currents and non-stop shoaling. To make it through this inlet in one piece, captains need to steer the boat either north or south to avoid the tough currents that will turn your boat around like it's a toy boat in a bathtub. Once inside the inlet itself, turn starboard or right toward the rocks, and if you're not paying attention, then the tide is going to suck you right in and your boat is now in the hands of the ocean. So many have tried to master the hull over inlet only to crash into the rocks, run aground, or just capsize. And if there's another boat trying to do the same thing in there, then forget about it, because the odds of avoiding a collision are slim to none. The hull over inlet is best reserved for the best of the best of the best. Number 14, St. Lucie Inlet. Florida has plenty of rough inlets to choose from, and the St. Lucie Inlet is another one that's not to be trifled with. This small area of water is incredibly narrow and full of surprise sandbars that constantly shift with the currents and tide. So just because you mastered it on a Monday doesn't mean on Tuesday will be any easier, because it's very possible that you'll be dealing with an entirely new beast. And despite the natural dangers, this Florida inlet is also quite popular, so boat traffic is always going to be an issue. So even then, the best navigators can fall victim to a newbie who hasn't found their sea legs yet, ramming their boat straight into yours. The best thing a captain can do here is hit the gas and hope for the best when meeting those rushing waves head on. And to make matters worse, the waters are too constricted for a safe side-by-side -side run by larger vessels. So if you're a smaller boat, then it's best to let the big boys and girls have this one to themselves. Number 13, St. Augustine Inlet. Another surefire way to cruise into the Atlantic Ocean is the St. Augustine Inlet in Florida again. But then again, maybe cruise is the wrong word to use, because this is one of the most dangerous inlets in the state. St. Augustine proves to be a challenge year-round, and even when the water seems calm in the summertime, it's a total death trap. The biggest issue here is the buoys. The intracoastal waterway channel is right next to this inlet, and it can be difficult to tell which buoys belong to which area. Every sailor worth their salt knows the old saying, red right, return, meaning when you see a red buoy, stay to the right to make your way back to the marina. But all of that gets turned on its head here, so if you're looking to hit the Atlantic via St. Augustine, it's not that hard to follow the channel's buoys and then collide with another boat on their own course, or even worse, run aground. This sort of thing happens all the time here. Number 12, Indian River Inlet. All right, moving things up the coast a little bit in the United States is the Indian River in Delaware. This rough spot sits right between the Delaware Bay and Ocean City, Maryland, making it an incredibly important and popular inlet, despite all of the risks involved. This inlet has a swift current no matter what time of year, and since it's a popular spot during the summer, it's not uncommon to see literally hundreds of boats making their way through here at a time, especially on the weekends. So yeah, those facts typically spell disaster for pretty much anyone, not on their toes or who is just plain unlucky. Couple that with the fact that it's an incredibly narrow inlet, just enough for single file boats to pass one another all of whom are trying to best the water's strong tides, and you're looking at some accidents and pile-ups galore. And just because you've almost made it to the river doesn't make it any easier, because when a skinny inlet like this opens up into such a large body of water, the water is only going to get choppier the closer you get. Even boat captains with decades of experience hate the Indian River Inlet. Number 11, Chatham Inlet. Cape Cod is one of the hottest vacation destinations on the east coast of the United States, and it's not hard to see why. It's a cute town with lots to do and some great beaches, but their Chatham Inlet is notorious for how it treats anyone who tries to make their way in or out. It's a popular fishing spot, but the only catch here is you need to be an excellent boat handler to drop a line. 
Unlike some other inlets we've seen so far, the Chatham Inlet is nice and wide, but it's the channel that's narrow, and the shifting sandbars mixed with a nasty east wind can often spell disaster. Oh, and did I mention all of the fog too? Well, if you can even see through the thick layer of gray fog, the Chatham Inlet will usually look nice and calm. And that's what gets so many people into trouble. They're not ready for all of the dangers hiding beneath the water's surface. So while you're trying to steer clear of the fog, it's pretty easy to hit a sandbar or even another boat if you're not careful. And a lot of times what happens is you get less experienced people steering the boat, and it's quite literally sink or swim once they hit the channel. Boats running around and even flipping over is a pretty common occurrence here, and lots of people who expected to have a quiet morning of fishing ended up getting a little more than they bargained for. Number 10, Oregon Inlet. Well, where to begin with North Carolina's Oregon Inlet? It's a super popular place for anglers to try both luck and skill to catch striped bass. And when the bass population reaches its height in November and December, expect to see around 300 boats a day in the inlet. When you have that many boats coming in and out of the inlet a day, rocking back and forth with the current, you'd expect to see some nasty close calls and the more than occasional collision. What's worse is that when you're setting up bait and tackle and trying to keep your line from getting tangled, you're not paying attention to things like waves and where your boat is in the water. This is where everyone runs into trouble. The fishermen at the Oregon Inlet also fall victim to the strong east and northeasterly winds, which causes sudden and dramatic shifts in the sandbars. A well-placed sandbar can create a surprise whitewater breaker and rogue waves which can make quick work of smaller boats out on the water, especially when they break at odd angles and are tough to dodge. And you best watch out for that cross current too. On average, the Oregon Inlet sees about six or seven boats capsized during those prime bass fishing months at the end of the year, some of which have resulted in death. Number 9. Carolina Beach Inlet the Carolinas have their fair share of nasty inlets, and the Carolina Beach Inlet is at the top of that list. The current of the Carolina Beach Inlet is fed from the outflow of the Cape Fear River, and if that isn't a sign to steer clear, then I don't know what is. And yet the inlet is used by plenty of boats to make it out into the river. When conditions are good, the odds of getting through unscathed are pretty good, but when conditions are bad, they're really bad. All it takes is the slightest change in wind direction or the tide, and that's it. The Carolina Beach Inlet is now an insanely dangerous boat trap. Things can be pretty unforgiving here, especially because the inlet is too shallow in some parts, meaning there are secret sandbars galore hiding at the bottom, just itching to send an unsuspecting boat ashore. It was so shallow that in 2019 the Coast Guard had plans to dredge the inlet to make it safer for the folks who traverse the waters. Luckily though, if you're not much of a risk taker, then the Masonboro Inlet is just a few miles away and much more forgiving. Number 8. Charleston Harbor the Charleston Harbor is in South Carolina. It's a deep channel with several navigation aids, so on paper, it's a pretty solid choice, and many boaters will tell you it's a breeze. And while all of that sounds nice, there are some key factors that make this tough on anyone without the proper experience and decision-making skills. So just what exactly is going on here? The Charleston Harbor operates 24 hours a day and sees a ridiculously high level of traffic. So especially on days when the weather conditions are rough and choppy, it can be pretty tough to not just stay in your lane, but also to steer clear of the other vessels coming in and out. Plus, all of that traffic can obscure much of the navigation tools out on the water like the buoys and cause boats to get a little too close to the jetties. And running into the rocks is an all too common occurrence here. It's a great reminder that you don't need to be in a car to be stuck in a traffic jam. Number seven, New River Inlet. There's no denying that the New River Inlet in Topsail Island, North Carolina is absolutely breathtaking. But don't let the beauty of the area fool you, because she's a tough one. If you're a seasoned pro, then traversing this inlet may offer a bit of exhilarating, if not white knuckle fun. But if you're new to the game, then it's best you stay away from this one. The open inlet offers limited shoaling, which may be enticing to anyone looking for some smooth sailing but the inlet is incredibly narrow at multiple points and offers a little too many twists and turns than you'd like. There are some parts of the inlet that are nearly impossible to get through. And if another boat is coming towards you hoping to squeeze in there, then you can both forget about it. The inlet has also fallen victim to some neglect over the years, with a lack of proper dredging also being an issue for vessels. And things only get worse on days with poor weather conditions. 
The new river inlet is also open at night, and because so many of those twists and turns are harder to see in the dark, plenty of people unknowingly head in there only to damage their boat. Number 6. Bogue Inlet Cedar Point's Bogue Inlet is pretty short, so it may seem like an easy one to navigate. But once many boats get in there, their captains are in for a rude awakening. The Bogue Inlet is full of nasty shoals and shallows that can easily catch the bottom of your boat and have you phoning in for a rescue in no time. Luckily, the inlet doesn't see many commercial vessels coming through, but it's incredibly popular with locals, guides, and anglers, all of whom are familiar with the challenges the inlet offers, and maybe some of them even get a kick out of it all at this point. But newbies better know what they're in for before heading out. It's the type of place where it's best to watch someone else go first to see how they do it, or even hire one of the aforementioned guides to keep not just your boat, but you safe through it all. The Bogue Inlet may be a bit more forgiving than some others, in that it's harder to capsize, but it still offers a pretty rough ride. Number 5. Barnegat Inlet Barnegat Inlet is a small inlet in Ocean County, New Jersey, that feeds into the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean. But what sets it apart from so many others on this list is that people have been using it for centuries. Even Henry Hudson, after whom the Hudson River is named, mentioned it in the early 1600s, saying it was full of mean shoals and tough breaks. And you know, even 400 years later, not much has changed. This would be a great inlet to avoid, only it's important for a lot of the commerce in the area, so big ships are passing through here day in and day out. And the Barnegat Inlet isn't just popular amongst commercial vessels, it's also a hot spot for scuba divers because of all the shipwrecks at the bottom. So, you know an inlet's rough when there have been enough wrecks that people can constantly plunder whatever is down there. And the jetty was only put there in the 1990s, so if you think it's dangerous now, just imagine what it must have been like not even 50 years ago. Number 4. South Lake Worth Inlet also known as the Boynton Inlet, the South Lake Worth Inlet can be found in Florida. It was built in 1927 and it cuts right through a man-made barrier beach. And while this dangerous inlet was never intended for navigation or use by boats, it seems recreational vehicles pass through on a daily basis. And getting through her in one piece is not easy. The South Lake Worth Inlet falls victim to the southward longshore drift, which causes the sand to accumulate against the jetties, and when left unchecked, which is usually what happens, it spills over into the nearby lagoon. Because of this, the inlet is seen a bit more dredging than usual, but it's also developed a bit of a notorious reputation amongst the locals. Strong wind and the accumulation of sand help to form plenty of shoaling, rough currents, and a lot of close clearances. This inlet sees tens of thousands of boats pass through the waters a year, and on average about 10 of those need to be rescued. Number 3. Jupiter Inlet In 2016, the town of Jupiter Inlet Colony was named the safest town in Florida. Too bad, though, that it's home to one of the most dangerous inlets in the world. The Jupiter Inlet is as short as it is narrow, and it has an incredibly shallow approach, not to mention the fact that it's lined by jetties on both sides. Things get bad the minute you're out on the water, and boats succumb to a nasty riptide almost immediately. It feels like all the water wants to do is smash the boats against the rocks all day. If you're looking to make it out on the Jupiter Inlet, then you better be good. Really good. It also has plenty of shifting sandbars at the front, which can prove to be too tough even for the most seasoned boat captains on a good day. And if all of that isn't enough, there's the hard northeast wind blowing, plus an outgoing tide that makes Jupiter Inlet nearly impossible to navigate. Plenty of boat captains lose their vessels here year after year in their attempt to best Mother Nature. Number 2. Grey River Bar New Zealand is surrounded by some pretty rough waters, but the Grey River Bar has got to be some of the worst, most dangerous, and downright deadliest in the region. But despite the sheer insanity of the Grey River Bar, it's still a popular fishing spot and is traversed by both skiffs and commercial vessels alike. The mouth of the river is first protected by an enormous sandbar that can shift in both size and location depending on the winds, and it's a well-known hazard amongst the locals. But being on board a vessel, even on a good day, can feel like you're in the middle of an ill-fated disaster movie. Boats capsize here all the time, and even when they radio for rescue, it's tough for the rescue boats to not only reach them, but make it back to shore safely. There are countless stories of people losing their lives to the unforgiving tides and currents of the Grey River Bar. And on one occasion, authorities were so fed up with boaters ignoring warning signs that they went as far as prosecuting two ships who went out thinking they could brave the bar. 
Number one, Columbia Bar. You might not know it, but the majority of deaths that occur on the ocean happen in bars and inlets, and the Columbia Bar is known amongst boaters as one of the most dangerous in the world. It's been dubbed the Graveyard of the Pacific and has sunk a good 2,000 large vessels, not including smaller fishing and commercial boats. This place is not to be trifled with, and if you need to make it through, then you need to be ready for a fight. The bar is much larger than normal, about three miles long, and you have to cut through the high standing waves and violent tides. And because there are no islands or wetlands nearby to break the water, the Columbia River is a fast flowing death trap. Whether boats are traveling inbound or outbound, they legally have to be guided through the bar by a licensed bar pilot who works on the river. But for anyone traveling outbound, the bar pilot has to come on board and guide you. It's absolutely amazing, and even when the shoreline is in sight, captains still have to navigate their way through the rocks before they can finally breathe easy. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.